Hey guys, welcome to another video for the Poco X3 Pro, also known as Vayu and Bhima. Now, of lately, it has been raining a lot of custom ROMs for the Mi 11X, the K20 Pro, and even this device. And yet again, we have a brand new ROM, Proton EOSP, moving to Android 12. Although this is unofficial, this is a very, very early build. I myself had issues, you know, getting this build going for a quick review. So I would not recommend you to use it as a daily driver, but wait till the end of the video. If you're someone who likes to try custom ROMs and stuff, you might as well go ahead and give it to try so before we get into the details if you like watching custom rom stuff and you, you own one of these three devices please subscribe and hit that notification bell icon because it doesn't cost you anything and it really motivates us and apart from this if you like chatting with people who are like-minded please join us on telegram because we have more than a thousand people over there doing exciting stuff and last but not the least if you think the hard work is worth the effort please click on the join button and support the channel now without further ado hello awesome people welcome to phone ops my name is Kailash, let's get going. All right, so let's see what we have here. Proton EOSP unofficial ROM, OSS, SYU and Bhima. Proton EOSP version 12 unofficial based on Android 12. This is released on the 27th of October, 2021. You have download source change log, device change log and credits over here. So let's see if they have anything interesting mentioned over here. Proton ESP, this, that, initial Android, enable refresh rate toggle in settings, added any this, this, this. So there are a ton of changes. As always, you can go ahead and pause the video and have a look at it. And apart from this, it does say that suggested firmware is 12.5.2 global. SE Linux status is enforcing. Safety net doesn't pass out of the box, which is a big problem for me. I'll tell you why. It ships with G apps and ships with Chaldea kernel. So now the reason I said that SE Linux is not enforcing. So for me, SE Linux is not a problem. The problem here is that the device is not Play Store certified. Now what happened is not only the device is not certified, it doesn't come with a file manager. It doesn't come with Google Chrome or any sort of browser. So I was not even able to, you know, go ahead and install this particular application called device ID using which you can go ahead and register on Google's website to get this somewhat working. So the small workaround that was told to me by someone in the Proton USB group is you need to go to storage, you need to go to documents and other and it will take you to the files by Google and then you can you know go ahead and install an APK. I had to manually download an APK on the computer and paste it to the phone's internal storage. That's when somehow sort of somehow I got this device to work and that is how we are reviewing this particular ROM. So let's get into it. Of course, for obvious reasons, as I mentioned over here, you don't really have the device certified in the Play Store. So that is the issue. And if you talk about other things at smoothness and stuff, we'll definitely talk about that. So the moment you boot into this particular ROM, you're greeted with a very, very clean UI. You don't really have anything apart from Play Store and the very, very basic and essential applications that you will need to use this ROM as a personal phone and stuff like that. For example, you have a very, very basic camera application, which works absolutely fine. So you should not have any issues there, right? You can go ahead and install Gcam, so no problem there. And then you have the Google search at the bottom to the left, you have Google feed, which is smooth and it works absolutely fine. I've not had any major stutters. There are some stutters which are, you know, a little annoying compared to some other custom ROMs. But remember, this is an initial build of this particular ROM for Android 12. So if there are some small here and there issues, you need to ignore them and give it a ROM, give it a try to this ROM. Now, if you press and hold over here, you will get options like home settings you do get your Google Pixel Android 12 based launcher, which has some customization. Then you have your Android 12 widgets over here. As you can see, material U theme being followed on. And then you have wallpaper and style, wherein you can go ahead and choose different combinations of accent colors and you can choose different wallpapers as well. And the moment you go ahead and change the wallpaper, it will go ahead and change the theming of Material U, which is really, really neat. And it works absolutely fine, just like a charm, right? Now, as I said, this ROM comes with very, very basic bare bones application. And uh, if you swipe from the top to bottom, you do have your usual Android 12 look with a screen recorder built in, which allows you to record internal and external audio. So let's start the screen recording. As you can see, the screen recording has started and immediately I can notice 
the jitteriness over here. So the built-in screen recorder on Poco X3 Pro Android 12 ROMs is a problem because yesterday I was on some other Android 12 custom ROM and I was recording the screen for gameplay and it was giving me issues. So use a third-party screen recorder for now. Yes, apart from that, the UI is pretty, pretty smooth. I don't even need to go ahead and, you know, check the screen recording. Now, if you go over here, you have power menu, of course. And then if you go edit, as you can see, you have your privacy quick tiles and you have caffeine. So, yeah, something new added over here. Let me actually see. I've never used caffeine, to be very honest. I don't really know what that particular quick tile does. So, CABC mode, advanced settings, okay high brightness modes okay so this rom does have some advanced features to be honest as i can see over here in android 12 so high brightness mode medium high okay yeah i'm indoors so i can't really make it and uh, let's quickly go here and let's look for caffeine takes me to display for caffeine i don't know what that means so if anybody knows what caffeine is please let me know in the comment section so yeah the quick tiles are present they are working absolutely fine no issues there at all even if you go to the multitasking menu it is working smooth as butter you do have your screenshot option and then you have your option of select which works like a charm and again you know you have your split screen multitasking which works absolutely fine so you will not have any problem there and trust me this rom is smooth it is not that it is always stuttery you cannot use it at all the ROM is smooth, it works like a charm. It's just that there are some initial, you know, issues wherein to get even log into the Google Play Store, it will not allow you, it will keep telling you the device is not Play Store certified, device is not Play Store certified and stuff like that. So now let's go to settings over here. Let's go to about phone and let's go to the Android version that is 12. If you keep tapping on it, you do have your Android 12 Easter egg. As you can see, and this is the Proton ASP version 12 mod kernel is the Shaldia kernel as they have rightly mentioned. Now let's look at a few options over here. Under network and internet, you do have your usual, you know, Android 12 stuff, connected devices, usual stuff, apps. You can go ahead and make changes to, you know, the default app screen time, special app access. And then under notifications, you have conversations and notification history, which you of course can go ahead and enable. Bubbles are present, but not supported by all the applications. So it should work for apps that supports bubbles. If you go to battery over here, you will see you have adaptive battery and thermal profiles, which I have enabled for the benchmark applications. As you can see, battery percentage, low battery light, and then you have storage, you have sound in which you have haptic feedback. So that is good. Clear speaker, direct sound enhancer with hi-fi is there. So that is neat. And under display, you have lock screen customization. You have ambient display. I would not recommend you to use it always on. You can set it to pick it up. You can raise to wave. You can hand wave. You can pocket. So let's actually lock this. Yeah, it doesn't work. That's, that's how it is supposed to work. But unfortunately, it doesn't. I'm pretty sure sooner or later they will fix it and they will make it better, right? Smooth display, you have the option of show refresh rate present over here. So adaptive refresh rate is working. So you do have CABC mode and you have the high brightness mode. So additional features are getting enabled in custom ROMs. That is a good thing. You do have your fingerprint scanner or your fingerprint lock, no face unlock over here. You do have your Android 12 privacy dashboard, which you can go ahead and use. And under system, you have some gestures, which is switch screen off, swipe to take a screenshot, prevent ringing. You have advanced restart. Let's see over here. Oh, so you do have your advanced restart option as well. Now, let's quickly go ahead and talk about CPU throttle test in Antutu because honestly, we didn't get the opportunity to run Geekbench. So first of all, let's talk about the CPU throttle test. Now, as you can see over here, CPU throttled to 89% of its max performance, which is not bad. And the average score was 185, 585 GIPS. So decent stuff there. And if you talk about the N22 benchmark over here, this device did score 589,848. So that is a pretty good score. And what I'll also do is before we actually end this video, let's go ahead and check the Geekbench score as well. Now, while it is running the Geekbench test, let me tell you that the battery backup on this ROM has been okay. It has not been great 
great it has not been bad the charging speeds have been fine i've used accu battery to test that and uh, yeah initial impressions are pretty good there are a few bugs here and there especially the play store not certified bug if if they fix that this rom can definitely be used as a daily driver especially considering it is a first build yes i agree you'll have to give it to them that there will be bugs let's wait for the geekbench test to complete and let's see what score we get all right now as you can see over here 780 single core 2571 multi core the multi core score is a little low but pretty decent geekbench numbers as well so as always proton usp is promising to be a very very good performing rom we have seen it in the benchmarks and this is an initial build let me know in the comment section what do you think about this rom until the next one this is kalash signing off at phone ops keep smiling take care goodbye